Abu Dhabi Dude! Hi there, this is Abu Dhabi Dude. Welcome back. And today I'm off on a public charging adventure. Um, it's kind of a crossover episode, this actually. It's kind of a public charging adventure combined with a road trip. Um, because I'm having to travel quite far. Uh, the story behind today's public charging adventure is that yesterday my iPace went in and had the H228 update applied to it. Now, if you've been following the channel up till now, you'll be aware that supposedly, supposedly, H228 fixes the Charge Place Scotland nightmares that I've been having. Um, and allows the car to charge properly on the old style Evo chargers. So, today's trip involves going and revisiting a bunch of Evo chargers that we've uh, we've already used in the past. So, um, we're going to revisit ones that we've used several times as well, ones that have been problematic for us. So the three we're going to experiment with today are three that we've never used before. Uh, what am I saying? Three that I've used uh, at least twice. Um, actually, that's a lie. One of them I've only used once, but it was so bad that I'm fairly convinced it was never going to work. Um, so today, I'm off up to the bottom end of Loch Lomond again, um, and I will stop off at Lomond Gate Services where they've got the new style Evo charger and I'll be using that charger to top right up to 100% um, which I wouldn't normally do. well I say that I've done it a couple of times now I wouldn't really normally recommend doing that on a rapid charger it's a bit pointless but I'll go and go on to explain why I'm doing that today so I'll start off there fill up to 100% from there, I'll head across past the Loch Long one, which I'm not going to stop at because that's been pretty reliable. Sometimes it's been problematic to start, but I've used it three times and I've had a charge three times from it, albeit with some difficulty. So I'm bypassing that one on the way out. Um, and in fact, I'm going to bypass them all on the way out. I'm going to go straight to the ferry terminal at Kenna Craig which is the end point really, that's the furthest I'm going. So I'm going right there, I'm going to stop there and uh, add a decent amount of charge. Now uh, I've done my usual little spreadsheet. Uh, I did two this time, I did one for wet weather and one for uh, dry weather. It is wet today, so um, according to this if I set off from Lomond Gate to Kenna Craig, I'll get I'll use 51% to get to Kenna Craig. Um, so that's uh, that puts us at 49% state of charge when we get there. So I'm gonna charge up a decent amount. I'll try and charge up maybe to uh, I haven't quite decided yet, it'll be either 70 or 80. I want to give it a decent run though to make sure it's a, a proper charge. I might only add it up to 70% because I need to do the same at the next charges, that's the issue. Um, so from there anyway, if that works, I mean if it doesn't work then overcharging is not going to be the problem. Uh, if that doesn't work then we will head back to uh, Loch Gilpeb, which we're going to anyway, sorry, if that doesn't work it just means that we don't get any charge but after that we're going to Loch Gilphead. At Loch Gilphead, um, I'll try again to take it up to around 70%. Now, I won't use that much getting to Loch Gilphead. I think it's about 13%. Can I create the Loch Gilphead? 10% uh, it reckons, actually. So I'll only be adding 10% at Loch Gilphead if I've charged the Kenna Craig. Um, from there, it's a uh, short run up to Inverary where we've also had no end of problems and again top up there to probably 70 maybe even 80 percent 
Um, if none of those work, the next stop is Loch Long, which we've had nothing but success at so far, as I said, but with difficulty. Um, so I will uh, stop there and charge it anyway, but it's also my backup if none of the other ones have worked by then. Um, and failing that, it's back to Lomengate for another another hit from Lomengate. Now, according to better route planners calculations, if none of the old style chargers work, none of them, you know, so if we end up getting no charge at all from any of those, then I will arrive back at Lomengate with 2% battery left. Now that is tight. Um, but that's what it reckons. Now I have factored in, I've made it slightly worse than it should be because I factored in that I'm going to be driving at 110% of the speed limit. I've put wet roads, which at the moment it is, although it's not raining, so they may dry up. But I've put wet roads on 110% of the speed limit. But I'm actually going to do the speed limit. I'm going to stick rigidly to the speed limits. So that should buy me a bit more. So I should get back, in fact, with probably closer to 5%. And that's worst case scenario. That's if none of the charges work. And that includes lock long, which has worked perfectly up till now. So fingers crossed, um, or as my South African wife would say, hold thumbs. Oh no. Um, so yeah, we're gonna hopefully uh, be able to make the whole trip without charging, if needs be. And as I say, those three chargers we've used before, none of them have ever worked perfectly. I've not had a complete charge from any of them. Both Inverary and uh, Loch Gilphead once have given us a partial charge, um, but that was only once. Uh, other times they've refused the charges at all um, so yeah we're uh, basically oops, sorry you, Laurie just pulling a U-turn right in front of me as you do I don't know where's the dash cam when you need it um, yeah so the uh, Yeah, the whole plan is to test out those ones that we've used before. Problem is, there's no point in just going to random old style chargers because some of them just work. Some of them work anyway. So that's, you know, I can't just go to ones nearby. So I'm specifically going to these ones because they've all been trouble for me. Never at any of them have I got 100% charge or, a you know, continuous charge. The best I've had is a partial charge. So today is a good test of chargers that I know give me problems. So uh, yeah, though, because it's all about the charging today and I don't want to elongate the episode with lots of stuff that people don't care about because the important thing today is the charging. Um, so today I won't be cutting in dash cam footage. I won't be cutting in... Uh, you know, scenic views, etc., etc. I'm just going to um, show the charging stops basically with a little talk in between to discuss what's just happened at each particular stop um, and then a round up on the way back. But there'll be no musical interludes with uh, scenery shots, etc. That's uh, not going to be the case today so um so yeah it's all about the charging i'm just going to show the charging and uh and we'll leave it that for now i will see you when we get to loman gate i'll do a short video there not much point because it's always worked but you never know h228 might have broken something so i will do a little video at uh at loman gate just to show the charging there um and uh and yeah i'll see you at loman gate bye for now Okay, we have arrived at Lomond Gate. So, if you'll come with me, let's uh, let's get charging. As I say, we're on 
the good chargers now, so this one should be 100% reliable. Should be. But you never know. But let's see, let's give it a go and see. Okay, so, as usual, swipe the card, wait for an authorised, oops, CCS please, take the cable out, plug it in, back to the charger, and start. Come on, baby. Don't give me any trouble like you did once before. We had a bit of trouble starting this. I don't know if you saw that particular video. It's taking its time. Which is never a pleasant moment when it takes its time. The car says it's charging. And there we go. As ever, exactly how charging should be. Swipe the card, plug the car in, press start. I am going to go and get some breakfast then. Well, I'll wait for this to charge up. Uh, I'm going to take it to 100%, so it's going to be a little while. So I'll leave that, have something to eat, and we'll get back on the road. I'll speak to you on the way to the next charging stop and just discuss new versus old chargers. See you in a bit. Okay, we've set off from Loman Gate. We've got 100% charge, which is perfect. Uh, the car's telling me it's got 260 miles of range, which is clearly a lie. Um, but I reckon they've obviously reset the GOM when they did the H228 patch. Um, but either way, we've got plenty of range at the moment. Um, and theoretically, as I say, enough to get all the way back to Loman Gate for a charge if it all goes disastrously wrong. Um, hopefully though, that's not gonna be the case. Uh, so yeah, we've got, we're bypassing all the charges on the way to Kennegraig, which I know uh, negates my stated ABC policy and I'm overriding that um, perhaps foolishly, but the reasoning behind that being we can get all the way to Kenna Craig and back to uh, Loman Gate without charging according to a better route planner, but only with 2%, which is far from comfortable. However, as I say, I've built in a fair safety margin. I've put wet roads, which they are, but I'm hoping we'll get some dry roads. And I am sticking to the speed limits, although I said in a better route planner settings that would be doing 110 percent of the speed limit um so yeah uh theoretically there's enough fallbacks in place that i'm not going to fall foul of this um if the update hasn't worked but but it really <laughs> i really want it to work <laughs> I'm genuinely excited actually about this trip because if you've watched my road trip videos up till now and my public charging adventures for that matter, the Charge Play Scotland network has taken over my life and my thinking. You know, it's, I, I've, I've become obsessed with it. And this could take that away. This could, you know, this could turn it into a simple and painless experience doing road trips in Scotland if it works. So I'm genuinely... Really, I'm like a kid at Christmas at the moment. I'm genuinely excited by this. But at the same time, I'm nervous because although my source on the inside assured me that H228 fixes the charging problem, until I have been and tried it, I'm not going to be 100% confident of that. And, you know... <laughs> I just don't take people's word for anything until I've experienced it for myself in my car. So, yeah, it's um, it's a big day today, it really is. This could be the end of ABC. Could be, or it might not be. 
if it is the end of ABC, then uh, as one of my viewers coined the phrase, it, uh, I think it was uh, it's, uh, Jagman Eye Pace, coined the phrase clown. So if ABC gets abandoned, we switch to the clown strategy, which is charge long only when necessary. So there you go. Today is a watershed moment. It's a crossroads or a fork in the path. It's a sliding doors moment, in fact. Um, so will this mean the end of ABC and future road trips switching to clown? Or does this mean I'm stuck with ABC pretty much forever? Time will tell. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched my channel before, ABC stands for Always Be Charging, which means you stop at every single charger on your way to top up to 80% or 90%, depending on how brave you are. But um, the idea being you've always got enough range for the next two or three chargers not to work. And the law of averages says, well, I've got a 50% success rate on the old style chargers. So the law of averages says, if you can negotiate four of them, you should get two charges within that. But even if at worst case, you only get one, you're no worse off. So that's, that's the theory behind it basically is you, by stopping at every charger and topping up, you avoid running out because of charger failure. Um, and it doesn't affect your overall journey time a huge amount. Obviously there's a little bit extra because you have to stop, get out, open the charge port, plug it in, you know, so it adds a couple of minutes per stop, I guess. But charging once from 20 to 80% doesn't actually take any longer than stopping three times to charge from 60 to 80%. So the actual charging time is about the same just with a few extra minutes to actually stop and plug in. Um, but it does become a little bit of a pain having to stop at every charger when you don't need to. Um, although the journey time doesn't change, it is very stoppy starty, as I like to say. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's ABC for those who didn't know. So yeah, um, as I say, the one thing I want to say is just as proof that what we're having with the I-PACE, in Scotland anyway, is not range anxiety, it's charger anxiety. When you stop and think about this, a better route planner is saying that with wet roads and 110% of the speed limit, I can go from Lomangate to Kennecraig and only use, and still have more than 50% of the battery left. That's two hours. It, it, according to the sat-nav, it's a two-hour drive to Kennecraig. So, if you stop and think about that, that's four hours of driving this car has on wet roads at 110% of the speed limit. That's a long time, you know, I, I don't want to be driving for four hours without stopping, in all honesty. Um, and my wife certainly wouldn't like that if, if she was in the car and we were going somewhere. So, that length of, you know, that amount of range is absolutely plenty for me if I know I can do it and then plug in and get a charge so it's definitely charge anxiety it's not range anxiety um, so if we can resolve it if we can fix it if we can get if, you know if H228 does resolve the issue this car <laughs> becomes absolutely perfect for me because that's the only issue at the moment it's the only thing that that is a bother with it is the charger anxiety the actual everything else is not a big deal at all it's no issue so so yeah fingers crossed or as my south african wife would say hold thumbs i don't know why they say that but they do apparently so Depending on where you're from, hold thumbs or fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, next stop is Kenna Craig. It's quite a long way, as I said. It's a good couple of hours driving, so I will uh, enjoy the car in the meantime. But not too much, because I'm sticking rigidly to the 100% speed limit. I'll, I'm, using the, I'm using the adaptive cruise control at the moment. Once we get onto the 
uh, twist these, I'll probably use the adaptive speed limit of them just to make sure that I never go above that speed limit. I'm sticking rigidly to it today um, because of the, the possibility of these chargers not working at all. You know, it's possible that none of the three could work, or none of the four even, because we've got Lock Long as well. Um, so, you know, um, I'm planning pessimistically. What is it they say? Um, hope for the best, but expect the worst. And that's what I'm doing today. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you at Kenna Craig, and uh, we'll see how it goes. See you there. Okay. Here we are. We're at... Uh, Kenna Craig Ferry Terminal and got my trusty charge place Scotland card as ever. So let's uh, let's get out here and see if we can get it to charges. Oops, sorry, lost you there for a sec. Right. Oh, very dark. Sorry, right, okay. Let's see. If it'll charge, this is the very first moment of truth. Oh, I'm scared. Can you tell I'm scared? Oh, now that's interesting. This looks completely different to the last time. The screen's different. Hang on, let me show you this. Now, I don't know if you can make that out. It's very hard to see, but the the login page is totally different. So have they changed something? That would be a bit of a bit of a pain in a way oops sorry right so it says connect the car up so let's do that there it goes and then let's get over and press the start button okay it's starting you can hear the fans not gone blue and the car is still flashing white come on let's try pressing the start button again sorry if it's a bit windy um because it is very windy no there we go it's an error ccs error ah oh dear Okay, well that has not particularly worked. Uh, let's try it again. But I'm now not hopeful of this. But that was first go. Let's not give up on the first go. So I'm trying the old press the card to the machine and hold the button down forever technique now. The fans have come on. Uh, Apologise for the wind noise. But it is very windy. No blue light. Nothing. CCS error. Right. That one has not worked. Again. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was a bust. And uh, I won't lie, a bit disappointing. Um, okay, what can we take from it? Okay, a few positives. First of all, that one was always awful. Um, I say always, but the one time I tried it, it wasn't even getting to the blue light coming on in the past. And that's, so it's never even, from what I can see, it was never even trying to talk to the car. So I don't know if that one's got some sort of communications issue, maybe. But it, it just wouldn't connect at all. It was going straight to the yellow fault light. We never got the blue light. Like the other ones, when they, go, when they don't work with the I-Pace, they go through the initializing checks uh, process and then fail. That one never even got to the initializing checks process, which makes me think it's failing before it tries to talk to the car. Now maybe I'm clutching at straws, but I kind of had a feeling that one might not work anyway. Um, off camera, I did try rebooting the system 
you know, pressing the emergency stop button, leaving it in for a minute, pulling it out, waiting for a minute, actually two minutes, then pressing the stop button, holding it in for a minute, I held it in, although it says 20 seconds on the screen, until everything rebooted, and I did try it again, and it was exactly the same. So I think, I hope, that's an indication that there is a problem with the charger there. Um, good news, positive news, is we only used 42% battery getting there. So, um, we're already 7% up on the deal. So, if that maintains the same situation, that's not even a sentence. But if I can maintain that on the way back, then we get back to Lomengate with actually plenty. At the moment, we get back there, based on that, we get back there with 9%. Um, if we do the same sort of consumption on the way back, we would get back there with 16%. But either way, I'm confident now that we can make it back to Loman Gate without having to worry about whether or not these charges work. So that's a plus. Um, obviously a minus is that it didn't work. However, um, I don't know if you could see it because the screen wasn't showing up on the on the camera as well as it was to my eyes, but it's a completely different screen that one and I don't remember it being like that the last time um, it was a different swipe your card message and a different you know the, the graphics on the screen were different to the other ones and I'm sure it was also different to how it looked the last time I used it but I, I couldn't 100% swear to that but I just don't remember seeing that sort of screen um, it's got a picture instead of showing you a card on the swipe your card page it shows you in a little picture of a charger. Um, which I'm sure it didn't do before. I'm sure it had the same screen as all the others. Who knows? It didn't work anyway. So, right, onwards to uh, Loch Gilphead. We've had, as you may remember, a mixed batch of results there. So, uh, we should get there with about 40 between 45 and 48% somewhere in there uh, which means we get to give it a longer charge to make sure, if it works to make sure that it maintains the charge over a reasonable period of time instead of dying after 9 or 10% like it's done before so there is that always find the plus side um, because we didn't get the charge at Kenna Craig we can charge longer at the other ones hmm ok interesting positive but it is a positive so uh yeah onwards to kenna craig uh, to kenna craig onwards to look guilt and uh the roads seem to be drying up now at the moment so that should improve the consumption a bit as well so already as it was we were After three well under of a mile turn and, left sorry as it was we were well under and now with dry roads we should be even better compared to where we were supposed to be. Anyway, uh, as the sat is about to start talking constantly again, we'll uh, leave it there for now and I'll catch up with you at Loch Gilphead. Okay, we're at Loch Gilphead. Moment of truth time. Charger open. Let's see if this works now. Now this has still got the old, say this has got the old symbology on the screen showing the, um, don't know if you can see that, probably not, it's the usual not overly clear uh, screen, but yeah, so this one definitely there's something different on that Kenna Craig one, but it hadn't fixed it, whatever it was. So anyway, let's swipe the card. User. Oh, these screens are so hard to read. Validating user. Right, that's done. Now plug the car in. You can't see it, but I've just plugged it in. And hit the start button. Old thumbs. Or uh, fingers crossed, either or. Still showing green on the charger. Still showing white. Charger's gone blue. What will happen to the car? 
Oh, come on. Car's gone green. We've had that before though. We've had that before. Can't read the screen. Still says performing initial checks. Oh, there's a loud clunk. And it says it's charging. Again, we've had that before though. But it does say it's charging. Error. Exactly the same as usual. It's gone. Oops. Sorry, lost me there. Exactly the same as usual. It's gone to uh, error mode again. Ah, so frustrating. We're back to where we started. Nothing's changed. Nothing's fixed. Ah. Oh well. I don't know what to say. There's not much to say. It's not working. I'll give it another go. I'll give it another go. Um, one thing that was quoted to me before was when the light goes green on the car, if you very quickly lock it at that point. But, you know, I'm getting tired of these little secret techniques. Nothing really works. But I'll give that a go if I can get it to go green again because past experience says that's it, you get one chance and it's gone now. But we'll see, we'll see. I'll give it another go but basically nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Okay, system's reset. So let's give it another go. Let's swipe the card. That's beeped. The car's already plugged in. Validating user still. I don't know if you can read that. As I say, it's very hard to read. Right, that's done. Now if you can hear it, but there's the fans coming on. And let's retire to the car. We're getting a blue light. Getting a white light on the car. And it's gone green again. Okay, let's let's do it from scratch. Right, put it back on the charger. We'll swipe the card. Validate user, which is working on. Okay, that's done. Charger. Plugged in, back to the machine, start button, fans are still running from before but come on, Let's see what we've got, right the fans have come on, uh, sorry the blue light has come on, not sure if you can see that, Let's see what the car does, it's gone green, Right, so I'm locking the car. That's the technique that somebody said. You get a split second to lock it. And then it becomes a full charge. Well, rather annoyingly, so far that has worked. But, you know, how many magic techniques are we going to have to come up with? And there we go. Error. Yep, a few seconds of charging. And then it dies. Reset again. Uh, yeah, I think I'll try a reset. I won't film it because it's kind of a two handed operation, a reset. You've seen it before. And if you haven't seen it before, you can uh, check out my other videos. They've, they're my first couple of road trips. Certainly, road trip number two, the Ardwain Gardens one, or Arduini Gardens as I, I believe the locals call it. Don't know which one's right. Um, yeah, you can see on that one the reset process if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll do it off camera. It's like I say, it's a bit long-winded. And then I'll get back to you and let you know if anything's changed. Okay, system's rebooted. So we'll give it one more go. Literally, one more go. If this doesn't happen, then it's not happening. Validating user. We'll see. Okay, let's get this cable in, ok, 
cable is in. Press the start button. Can you hear the confidence in my voice? It's um, okay, it's gone blue on the charger. It's gone nothing on the car. It's flashing white at the moment. Okay, I'm trying locking the door now, but we've got a green light. We got a green light. What have we got on the charger? We've got a message saying it's charging. Battery's at 50%. The roads were wet. It's so only used 8%. So we're actually doing way better than a better route plan, I reckon. So I'm going to have to give them some feedback on that. Okay, we've got 0.4 of a kilowatt hour so far. 0.53. Are we charging? The thing is, I don't know that this particularly proves much. Although I've done a reset. But, I don't know that it proves very much. I mean, if you think about it. You know, it was working from that perspective before. Although... This one's been very flaky in the past. But even so, you know, we've done system resets before and got them to work. What we're hoping to happen today is for it to work without having to do that reset. It's still charging. Um, 1% now. So yeah, I think, well, hang on, let me uh, just get my spreadsheet out and just go through what we should have used according to the spreadsheet, according to Better Route Planner. To go from Kenna Craig to Loch Gilphead should have been 10% on wet roads. Mind you, that was at 110% and I was at 100%. I'll redo these when I get home to find out what I really should have done at 100%. But it's over by 25% and has already factored in. The extra 10% for the for the wet roads. So unless going 10% over a 60 limit increases your consumption by 25%, it is quite out. It's not uh, it's not accurate. Um, I mean, it's accurate on the good side and that you're arriving places with more charge than you expect. Um, better that than not enough, I suppose. But it is out. Um, but I'll give them feedback. It is still an alpha model the iPace, if you check on betterrouteplanner.com, it does say it's an alpha model. So, you never know. Uh, a bit of feedback and hopefully they'll, they'll get it to reflect more realistic numbers in the future. But at least it's erring on the side of caution. At least I'm not using more than expected, because that could have been a problem. Although now the charger's working, not so much. So I'm starting from 50%. What shall I do? I think I'll charge up to... 70 and then move on to Inverary. When we get to Inverary, we should be at around about 60%. So then we'll charge there up to 80 and then we'll have used if we can. Then in both places, we'll have used at least 20% worth of charging. So that'll prove it won't prove that it would have kept going all the way, you know, and given us. 60%, 80%, 100%. But a 20% run is fairly good. And it avoids me overcharging. Because I do want to stop at Loch Long as well. And just stick some in it there. Um, but yeah, not hugely impressive today. It's not really a resounding success for the H228 update. I mean, we're charging here now. And hopefully it will continue to charge. But it took so many attempts to start it. I don't know if we can call that particularly a success. Um, see how Inverary goes. But uh, but yeah, I'll, as I say, I'm going to let that go up to about 70%. I'll probably sit and watch some TV in the car. Um, maybe stick a, a Doctor Who or a Blue Planet or something on. And... Uh, Kill some time that way, and then, uh, ah, uh, charge has just died. Yeah, this is exactly the same as it's always been. It's died again. 
Okay, I'm not going to film it, but I'm going to go out and try all the usual processes and see if I can get it going again. But it's died. And uh, let me see what we got to. Uh, only about, I think it's only added about 3%. Um, bear with me, just waiting for the screen to come up. Come on. just want to see. Thank you. My EV, come on. Uh, gone into a complete reboot, I think, by the looks of it. Usually when you restart it after a short break, everything comes up straight away. But it's not this time. Okay, right, we charged to 53%. We got 3% charge out of that. That's, again... That's rubbish. Yeah, I think we can officially say H228 achieves nothing. I'm going to stop at the next couple of charges anyway. I'm going to try and get this one going again. Vehicle not fully charged, power cut detected. It just said. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and get it going again. Try and get it to re recharge again. But even if it does start again, I think we can safely say nothing's changed. Nothing at all has changed. I'm not going to film me trying to get it going again, so I'll talk to you uh, later. Okay. Nothing was working. Um, yeah, that final attempt there, I, I managed to get 1% more and then it died again. So, two charging sessions, 4%. We can definitely, definitely say H228 hasn't fixed anything. Just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to go to Inverary now and stop. Uh, we don't need to, we're at 54%, um, which is way ahead of where we were expecting to be, and I was still expecting to make it back to Lomengate. I was expecting at this point to be... We've just done... Lock guilt pad, so I was expecting to be at 41% now, and I'm at uh, well 54%. So that means we will get to Loman Gate with at least 15%, probably more, because the rest of the trip to Loman Gate is based on ABRP's data as well. And if they've overestimated up to now, they probably overestimated for the rest of the trip. So we'll probably end up getting to Lomengate with around 20%. Which means we actually only need to charge off about 10% to get home at, at Lomengate. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we've got plenty of, plenty of juice. Um, and that 4% made no difference either way, really. But we've got, you know, the charging is not a necessity other than the fact that it's supposed to work. But yeah, looks like we've not seen the last of ABC, unfortunately. Um, the sun's come out, so I guess the roads will probably dry up fairly quickly. Um, they are still wet at the moment, but as I say, even with the wet roads, it's quite seriously underestimating my consumption so um yeah not worried about again like I say it's not range anxiety with the I-Pace it's just charger anxiety and I don't really have that today because I'm going to Lomengate where I know I'll be able to charge so I'm not even having charger anxiety other than the fact that I was hoping that these ones would work and they haven't. Inveri's been nothing but trouble as well for me we've had one partial charge out of Inverary uh, and, and that was it so again I'm not expecting much, seems like H228 has altered absolutely nothing uh, which is a shame a great shame uh, so yeah pity but we've always got ABC 
at least I don't have to say farewell to it. I was becoming quite attached to it anyway, so I suppose, you know, saves me from having to say farewell to an old friend. <laughs> um, so yeah, sadly, Jagman Ipes, there is no such thing as clown for me. I'm going to be sticking to ABC by the looks of it. So uh, yeah, I'll just uh, get on with the drive and I will see you at Inverary. See you in a bit. Okay, we are here at Inverary. Don't have high hopes. There's a leaf plugged in, but luckily he's on AC. Um, so let's see what happens. Swipe the card. I'm not going to be able to do a an emergency stop press on this one because that guy's plugged in, so it would kill his charge. Right. User is validated. Car is plugged in. Start button is pressed. I mean, this has become more of an academic exercise now, to be honest. Because, um... Ah... <sighs> Yeah, just, you know, it's not really proven very much, even if this one charges. It's gone blue, light on the car's gone green. It says it's performing initial checks or whatever it is it does. Car's gone white again. And the fault light's come up. So yeah, unsurprisingly, that hasn't worked either. Yep. If anything has gone worse, <laughs> to be honest, I've got nothing now. I've, you know, that's three charges, nothing. I suppose that was what happened the last time. Um, we didn't get anything out of uh, three charges in a row either. But even so, the partial charge on the other one was pathetic. Oh well, let's see. I'll give it another go. Let's give it another go. Okay, so let's uh, swipe the card. Validating user. Don't know if you can read that, it's the usual rubbishy screen. Okay, press start. There come the fans. Light on the charger has gone blue. Light on the car has not gone anything. Hmm. Okay, let's try it again. I've unplugged the car. There's the card swiped, as the beep tells us. Validating user. Okay, user is validated. So, get. Oh, why is it not? Okay, that was weird. But that's the car plugged in. <laughs> Not sure why, but it wouldn't go in for a moment. Okay, now we're waiting on. Uh, blue light, which has come up. And there's a green light on the car. Okay, but we've had that before, so it doesn't really help much. It says it's performing initial checks. Okay, it's, it's started. But it's gone to fault. So we got 0 0.001, sorry, 0 0.01 kilowatt hours before it gave us a fault. Okay, it's not working. What a surprise. Okay, well, Inverary didn't work. So that's all three of them failed dismally to charge the car. Um, I'm going to stop at Loch Long anyway. Not because I need to charge and not because it will prove anything. Um, 
But I just want to make sure the lock long still works and that H228 hasn't made things worse. Because uh, lock long has always worked for me, although a couple of times it started with difficulty, but it has started and charged continuously. No partial charges. So I've got 100% success rate on there, although with difficulty, particularly the last time. However, I just want to check that and see if it's if it's all right. Um, yeah, disappointing to say the least. I was kind of prepared for it, but you know, at the same time, I kind of wasn't. I was really, really hoping that this would fix it. And it hasn't. Which means it's ABC forever. Certainly for getting around the sort of west and north of Scotland. I've noticed on uh, when I've been looking at a few trips going eastbound, you know, um, there's a few more of the new style e volt chargers available out to the east. Um, you know, sort of Edinburgh Way. Berwick Way and up round sort of Montrose and Forfar and Aberdeen Way. There's also some Instavolts and stuff around Forfar. So there's a lot more options going east, um, which should hopefully get rid of the need to, to do ABC on those trips. But I think, yeah, looks like west and north, we need to continue with ABC. But I'm a little bit worried, and Loch Long is partly to put my mind at rest. I'm um, a little bit concerned that none of them worked. Although we got 4% whoopee do out of uh, Loch Gilphead, you know, that was split over two charges. 4% over two sessions is particularly poor. Um, so, yeah, I, I, Loch Long needs to work. Otherwise, H228 is broken something more seriously. And even ABC is going to not work. So, oh, come on, lock along. Well, we'll be there fairly soon. Uh, how far are we? 20 miles to lock along. So, yep, we're at 43%. Plenty of charge to get to Lomond Gate. It's not a concern at all. The roads are now dry as well. So, you know, I'm reasonably certain that... Well, actually, I'm no, I'm totally certain that we'll reach Lomond Gate without any concerns whatsoever. But, once again, a disappointing failure on the old-style evils. Um, yeah, so much for my inside source. Uh, I'm afraid he's wrong. H228, I can categorically say, does not resolve the charging issues. So there you go. Oh well, I'll speak to you when we get to Loch Long, I guess. I'll enjoy the drive and enjoy the car and enjoy the fact that the range is so good that I can get back to Lomond Gate without having to worry. So even if Loch Long doesn't work, it's fine. But my little internal OCD freak is probably not going to leave Loch Long without making it charge the car because I want to continue my 100% success rate there, which is stupid, but there you go. I mean, I could possibly have pushed it longer on all of those three chargers and maybe have got somewhere, but the point of this trip was to ascertain whether H228 fixed it, and if it's taken six seven eight nine ten attempts to get the charger to start and we're still getting partial charges and loads of failures and loads of errors you know we haven't proved anything so other than the h228 hasn't fixed anything so when i actually don't need the charges and i can get back to Lomond gate without it there's no point in keeping on going to get the charger to work because that's not what i'm here to prove I was here to prove whether H228 resolved it or not, and it clearly hasn't. So since I can get back to Lomond Gate without charging, I'm only going to try those four or five times tops because, you know, there's no real point of keeping on 
going with it because it, it doesn't prove anything one way or the other it just proves that they're no better than they were before where you can sometimes with sheer bloody mindedness force it to give you a charge but it's always been the case that so you know doing it today it's an unnecessary waste of my time because the charging you know I don't need it to get back to Lomingate I can get there without it um, so all I can say is I'm glad that a better route planner was pessimistic about my consumption I'm glad um, that the Jag has got brilliant range because I'm sad <laughs> that it's still not working with these uh, evil chargers so ABC you're gonna hear a lot more of it unfortunately I'm still not going to be doing a road trip where I don't get to talk about charging, I don't think. Oh well, never mind. ABC and me were best of friends. See you at Loch Long. Okay, we're here. We have reached good old Loch Long. And it's time, oops, sorry. It is time to give it a go, see if it works. No guarantees, and I'm a bit concerned that H228 has actually managed to break something rather than fix it. But let's get the charging port open and let's get going. I guess you don't need to see this, you've seen this often enough now. Card swiped. Charging cable plugged in, start button pressed. Okay, big question now is, is it going to work? Okay, the fans have come on. But it's still showing a green light on the charger, no blue light. And I've got a flashing white on the car. Still green. Still white. Let me try the start button again. That's uh, not looking promising. But at least it's a different fault yet again, you know, which is nice. Bit of variety is always good. Just keep randomly pressing that start button because, you know, that always fixes it. Oh, and there go the fans. Okay, maybe that doesn't always fix it. Let's try it again. Swipe the card, press the start button. Make sure the thing's in, which it is. And, oh geez. Well, this is a worry. I'm getting nothing at all now. The charger's not even trying to go blue. All I'm getting is a green light. start button does not appear to be solving the problem. It's the blue light's not coming on. Oh, nope. just as I said that the blue light came on. <laughs> okay, we've had that before though, so that doesn't mean anything's better or worse necessarily. Still got a flashing blue light, uh, ugh, flashing white light on the car. Charger says it's performing checks, but it's gone green again, which means it's not working. Yeah, and disconnection. Okay, we're gonna try it one more time. Swipe the card. Press the start button. There go the fans. 
Waiting for that blue light. Waiting for the blue light. Not getting the blue light. We try start again. No blue light. Okay, now I'm kind of wishing I'd left it alone. That's all that's happening. The car is just going flashing white light and the charger is staying green. We're not getting a blue light at all. Well, we got it out once. Ah! Just as I say that, the blue light comes on. Initial checks and the green light. Okay, that's not good. Um, it's saying 68% as well, which is not my state of charge. That's the old state of charge, whoever charged here last. So I'm now taking the radical step of a uh, emergency stop and a reboot. Um, the red lights come on. So basically, I'll t explain it to you. I'm not going to make you watch it, but I have to leave it like this for a minute pull the stop button back out, leave that for a minute. I've got to leave it for a full minute, I've been told. I tend to leave it for two to be on the safe side. Then you have to press the stop button, hold that in for 20 seconds, and then it reboots. So I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll come back after it's rebooted. Okay, system is rebooted. I've gone through the full process. And it's ready, so let's try again. First of all, let me just get the char, the, the char, get the car. So it's looking for a charge. Okay, right. Swipe the card. Take the cord. Plug it in, flashing white light, press start, fans come on and the green light, oh the blue lights come on a lot quicker this time, but nothing on the car yet, spontaneously decides to lock itself, and there goes the green light. But it still says performing initial checks. We're not out of the woods yet. Thirty-three percent we were at. And if you can see that, got down to thirty-three there. And we're charging. Everybody, we are charging. Lock long. Started with difficulty. But at least it started. I was getting a bit worried there that H228 had actually somehow broken something, but it hasn't. Right, we're up to 34%, so we've added half a kilowatt hour just over. Car, ICE vehicles are so noisy, aren't they? Aren't they, though? Um, so, yeah, 0.7 kilowatt hours now added. So, I have to say, in all honesty, Nothing seems to have changed. Lock Long still works with difficulty. Loman Gate works absolutely simply. Um, Inverary, Lock Gilt Head, and Kenna Craig don't work. Unless you count the 4% that I got out of uh, Lock Gilt Head, which I don't, by the way. Okay, well, I'm going to get back in the car. The rain's starting to come on again, of course. Of course it is, um, and yeah, I'm going to watch some TV and wait for the car to charge, and then we should be able to skip Loman Gate. To be honest, as long as this runs 
reliably and continuously. Going to Lomond Gate proves nothing now. So I'll just charge up here for a while. Um, and then get going home. And then I'll come back to you once we finish charging and we're on the way home. I'll come back with a uh, roundup. But I think you know what I'm going to say. But please stick around and join me. Speak to you in a bit. Okay, well, that was the last charging stop now because we uh, managed to get up to 90% uh, at Loch Long. So it charged continuously. That one's always worked. So it doesn't prove anything other than the fact that at least H228 hasn't broken the chargers that, that were working before for me. So yeah nothing's changed we still gonna have to stop for every charger and and yeah i'm sorry to say despite my source on the inside um who swore blind that this definitely definitely worked i can categorically tell you it definitely definitely doesn't so uh yeah it's a shame um but, on the plus side, um, my consumption was way less than a better route planner was saying. So, you know, my actual range on wet roads, driving at the speed limits on mainly 60 roads, is um, pretty much about 230 miles, I would say. Um, and I wasn't holding back I mean I wasn't going above the speed limit ever I stuck to the speed limit fairly religiously but um, I didn't uh, you know I was, I was still accelerating reasonably quickly I wasn't flooring it I was being you know <laughs> kind of somewhere between really really careful and really mad so I was just driving what I would call normally some fairly quick acceleration um, and yeah never going above the speed limit except a couple of times where I did need to overtake people there's a few places where there were people like dawdling along the 60 roads at 30 miles an hour so I had to take my overtaking opportunities a few times there on the trip um, at which point when I did that I did then floor it and do a proper overtake because I don't believe in messing around with stuff like that um, so other than that though yeah so it was a fairly normal spirited drive but sticking to the speed limits um, and I'm getting comfortably 230 miles range like I say I drove two hours effectively um, without charging and I still had 33% actually it was a bit less than two hours because I charged at Loch Long rather than Lomond Gate which is probably about 15 to 20 minutes away so um, yeah nonetheless I charged to 90% and it's showing 215 miles of range at 90% um, so yeah my point being I can easily drive for four hours on these kind of roads and three hours on the motorway I reckon without stopping and that's plenty however yep we're still gonna have to do ABC um, I've never even tried this with ecotricity so I dread to think how that's gonna be like I say I saw an interview with him uh, I can't remember his name now it just suddenly escapes me but the founder of ecotricity who said that all his charges are being upgraded within the next week or two um, and they should all work thereafter on CCS reliably time will tell time will tell but um, but yeah unfortunately charge play Scotland have not made the same promise so yeah it's a disappointing day but it's still been an enjoyable drive and still with three charges failing on me and to be honest, the fourth one could have failed. It didn't, but it could have failed. And I still didn't get stuck. So that's, again, that's a 
fairly warm endorsement of the I-Paces range, you know. The range saved the day again. I mean, I, I got that last charger with 33%. Um, I could have easily made it to Lomond Gate with probably 20%. So still from there, I could have made it to Glasgow Airport that's got a, is that a Genie Point, I think, that's at Glasgow Airport. I could probably even have made it just about, though I would have been on my last dregs, but I might even have been able to make it to Kilmarnock, you know, where there's another charge play Scotland, but more importantly, there's a couple of insta volts. So, you know, the range is is, is its saving grace, really. Um, without that, it'd be undrivable in, in this part of Scotland. But the range, combined with ABC, makes it work. So yeah, that's the uh, thought for the day. I guess the thought for today has to be, clown is dead. Long live ABC. So the ABC adventure continues. If you've enjoyed the video, then uh, you're some kind of sadist. But if you've enjoyed the video, then please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. If you do subscribe, click on the bell and you'll get notification messages every time I upload a new video and uh, you won't miss anything. If you do want to subscribe, you can do that now by clicking on my ugly little face over there. And don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel like this one up here. Till next time, this is Abu Dhabi Dude saying so long, take care, see you soon. Bye! Abu Dhabi Dude!